Hey guys, Nick here. Let's talk about the knee exam. Let's start things off with the components of a solid knee exam. Now keep this in mind not only for the board exams, but also for the wards. Knee pain is an incredibly common complaint. Let's start by talking about the anatomy of the knee. So, what do you need to know? Well, there are only a handful of key structures here. Let me orient you to this picture. This is an anterior view of the knee. Here's the femur, the patella, the tibia, and the fibula. The patellar tendon is cut away so we can take a look at the ligaments inside the knee. The first two structures, and the most likely to be tested, are the cruciate ligaments, the anterior and posterior cruciate ligament, fondly referred to as the ACL and PCL. Now why are they called cruciate? Well, because cruciate means cross-shaped, which is exactly what they do. They form a cross. Now how can you remember which one is the ACL and which one's the PCL? Well, the A and P in ACL and PCL refer to where they attach on the tibia. So you can tell in this picture that we're looking at what structure here out in front? Right, the ACL, as it's attached anteriorly on the tibia. And what is tucked behind it, crossing to the posterior tibial attachment? That's right, the PCL. Now how would you test these ligaments? Well, using the anterior and posterior drawer signs. In the anterior drawer sign, if the ACL is out, the tibia moves freely in what direction? Well, anteriorly. A second and actually more specific test for the ACL is called the Lachman test. This test is performed by pulling the tibia anteriorly while the knee is flexed at 30 degrees. This tests for any significant laxity of the ACL. Conversely, in the posterior drawer sign, you're testing the PCL. Which direction will the tibia slide? Posteriorly. Remember this, ACL goes with positive anterior drawer sign, and that goes with anterior translation of the tibia. The PCL is just the opposite. Now let's move on to the periphery of the knee on the lateral and medial sides. On the medial side, opposite the fibula, we have the medial collateral ligament or the MCL. On the lateral side, we have the lateral collateral ligament. These ligaments prevent abnormal tibia abduction or adduction. So one way the boards will get you confused is to test your understanding of the AB versus adduction. Do you recall the difference? Well, one way to remember is that abduction is like being abducted or moving away from midline. Adduction is just the opposite moving toward midline. So how can we test these ligaments? By stabilizing the knee and exerting a medially directed or valgus force or a laterally directed or varus force on the tibia. The valgus force tests the MCL and the varus force tests the LCL. The abnormal passive abduction test is when you apply a lateral valgus force on the tibia. If the MCL were out, what would you expect? A hinging motion about the knee, right? In what direction is that abnormal hinging motion? Right, in abduction. On the other side, an abnormal passive adduction test is when you apply a medial varus force on the tibia. What will happen if the LCL is out? That's right, hinging in adduction. Finally, let's talk about the meniscus, which is one piece of cartilage between the femur and the tibia. You've probably heard of a meniscus tear before. What is unusual about the medial meniscus? It's attached to the MCL. This makes it less mobile than the lateral meniscus. Always test the MCL and the medial meniscus when you examine a patient. So how do we test the meniscus? With the McMurray test, we're going to rotate the tibia while flexing and extending the knee. Now, internal rotation is when you rotate the tibia so that the toes point to the midline. If the patient has pain and popping, the patient might have a lateral meniscus tear. Just the opposite or external rotation will give signs of a medial meniscus tear.